Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Vaishnavi, your ENT educator on the Prep Ladder platform. And it's with immense pride and honor that I introduce you to my guest, Dr. Akar, who scored the amazing rank of number one in the INICT examination. I am overwhelmed and extremely happy and proud from the team of Prep Ladder to have Dr. Akar on our platform. And I'm sure that we are going to get a lot of insights that we haven't heard from him so far through this interview. So welcome, Dr. Akar. Thank you very much, ma'am, for the kind introduction. Even I was overwhelmed on hearing the result for the first time. So, yeah. So what was your reaction like? I'm sure, uh, you know, you were definitely very happy and uh, you couldn't process the fact that uh, I am number one, but it definitely means something to be there on number one. I think that is what every student strives for. So how did it feel for you? I still remember while sleeping yesterday night, just the page where my roll number showed one and hundred percentile, just that was flashing in front of my eyes. And I was just thinking, is it real? Is it really my roll number? So it took me almost a day to finally comprehend and like believe it. I was really overwhelmed. Like even while sleeping, I could see the roll number on that PDF with rank one written and the hundred percentile. And I was really quite shocked. And I was always thinking that, is it really my roll number? Is it really my roll number? Did you have someone to pinch you? No, ma'am. I <laughs> just had a senior who had checked the result already for me. Okay. So I was just cross-checking it twice and thrice just to be sure. Okay. And what was your parents' reaction like? Did they expect or did they say that, are you sure you're the one? What was their reaction like? Um, I remember my mom saying just as I left the center after giving the NICT that she felt that it was really going to be a better exam than my NEET exam. And she told that you will definitely get a better rank looking at your mm -hmm. face and your happiness that you are having after giving the exam. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they were both shocked, but they accepted the news much more faster than me and they are quite happy. I think I just spoke to another topper and she also mentioned that her mother was able to find like, you know, she had instincts that her, she'll do much better than the NEET examination. So I think somewhere today on Mother's Day, the instinct of mothers comes true and I'm sure you have given the best gift to your mother on this Mother's Day. So with that, uh, yeah, I, I will start with a few questions for you. So basically, I'd like to know, I mean, of course, you had a plan, you had a study, you know, design of how you're going to go about how you're going to target your examination. Can you just briefly tell me, like, how was your schedule through the undergraduate days? And how was your schedule through the internship? And how did you plan? And what made you plan? Like, you know, in this way, I have to plan my studies. So did you follow a general rule? Or did you tailor made your own approach towards this examination? Um, as I joined my UG college for the first time, the news was already there that we might have the next exam. So I was quite confused at that time too. But I decided to uh, stick to whatever my senior, seniors had to say about it. I didn't follow their plan blindly as such because I believe that I might be able to perform much better if I make a few fine adjustments which are as per my weak and my strong points. So my preparation began, you can say, right from the first year itself, not by uh, reading uh, any... Uh, ready-made notes or anything like that but i tried to follow the standard textbooks because i was already always scared that uh, how should i read such uh, big standard textbooks that we have in mbbs of all the 19 subjects so i dedicated all my first and second year to try and understand that how a standard textbook should be read which point should be given importance to and i tried to integrate it in such a way that i am preparing for both my university exams as well as for the entrance exams and towards the end of second year is when I actually began by uh, taking the help of preparatory apps and the QBank. Uh, during my UG days, I used to allot, after I finished my college, I used to allot at, at least two to three hours for studies post uh, uh, after I returned from college. And uh, during internship in the beginning, it was tough to integrate studying, working, everything. Doing, doing it for the first time was quite overwhelming. So I decided to start slow, but definitely uh, fix a pace for me, which will help me improve my efficiency. Towards the end of internship, when I was close to the exam, I had increased my study hours to around 10 to 12 minimum per day, just before a uh, month before the exams. 
Okay, so I think uh, that you know somewhere you've been uh, consistent, you've been disciplined, you knew what to do, and you knew how much time to allocate. You did that right from day one. You, I think you've used the best strategy possible by using the standard textbooks. Of course, you know there are uh, uh, you know resources available today that can actually confuse you, but I think there is no replacement to a standard textbook, and that I think is the first choice that any student should go for. And yes, preparatory apps help you to narrow down your vision and to understand what has to be given more importance and what has to be given less importance so that your direction is more linear and you are more oriented to the examination so can you quickly in a line can you tell me how did standard textbook or why should a medical student should turn to a standard textbook and how does it make a difference from reading these big volume books from the shortcuts that we have today um, I always use the preparatory apps that are there to find out the important things I need to focus more on. So as I used to read those topics from the standard textbooks, that, that there are always some few extra points above and below that uh, place, which always give you an extra edge over others than the uh, others who are not reading the standard textbook. So uh, that was my strategy that those little points might help me in the future, definitely. And another thing I believe is that uh, the standard textbooks are the ones that we uh, read it again and again for our exam preparation or for understanding sake. So I thought that it creates uh, more of a pictorial memory in my brain so that I can remember what is uh, printed where on the page. So it helps me remember more and keep calm while remembering it that yes, I can remember it. I know exactly where it was on the page, where have I read it. So that gave me sort of a confidence while fetching for the answers in the questions. Yeah, I think whatever you said is absolutely apt that, you know, whenever you're studying a standard textbook, of course, the core points are covered by your preparatory apps, but the link points that you have for the core points is something that will strengthen your roots in the head of particular, say, disease or the condition or whatever it is. And I think the ability to develop that critical thinking when it comes to MCQs, which are not fact-based, where they ask you clinical vignettes, you have to get those roots right. And without those roots right, I think it's quite difficult to reach to a level that you have reached. Okay, so with this academic questions that I have bombarded you with, I'd like to know what is the other side of Dr. Akar. So do you have a life other than study or how are you as a person? Are you just always like that study, study, you know, geeky, nerdy boy, or are you having another life attribute that you'd like to share with our learners? Um, though in the college to everyone, I might seem like I was the geeky boy, but when at home, I used to enjoy watching movies with my mom's beat, uh, going outside or staying at home and watching them on the TV or listening to music, which was quite an important part of my journey, I can say. So yeah, plus I used to play the keyboard before I joined MBBS, but with MBBS, it became quite tough to maintain it. So occasionally I used to play, but ma majorly I used to listen to songs and watch movies with my mother. Okay, I think Even your mom is your best friend. Yes, ma'am. Even before NEET and I, and I, uh, NEET, I remember just 20 to 30 days left and I had gone to watch a movie with her and I really enjoyed that day that, yes, I could do that because I was consistent in my preparation. So I did not worry that I might be missing on some stuff to uh, read. So, yeah. So I think that the thing that you have your mother by your side and you have, uh, you know, you liking towards mu music, likings towards and movies, I think that's a stress buster and everyone must have that stress buster that will put you back on track when you're preparing for something as big as INICT or NEET. And uh, I'm very happy to understand that you're so close with your mom and I, I somehow uh, feel that, you know, after a certain age, we like to distance our parents from us and we want to isolate ourselves. But this is something that, uh, you know, has given me also a very nice insight of yourself okay so uh, with this now let's get back to the academics and i'd like to know what is the importance of the gts and the custom modules that you took up on prep ladder and how did it help you plan your preparation through this entire entire uh, year or entire course that you've been taking for and the first step of any intern's preparation i feel should be giving a gt mm -hmm. to set a baseline for him or her to know which are his weak, his or her weak subjects and what to focus on more. And as you go on giving the GTs, you understand what is the trend of your score, which subjects you need to improve more on, and which subjects it's okay to give a le little less importance, and instead you can devote those time for your tough ones. Uh, then the other important thing is reviewing the GT. It is equal or even more important than giving a GT, 
because it is at that time that you realize where what you have done wrong and it is those little questions that help you give an extra edge like there are few questions which you can easily avoid uh, doing a mistake there just by reading a few fine details or sometimes missing the all except or by not focusing entirely on the image correctly because over the times i have seen that the images that are shown during ini or neat are not that great images sometimes you have to literally squint your eyes to see what they are trying to ask i remember in this ini ct they had just given identify what is given in this image there was no stem or anything for that question so it's really important to expose yourself to more and more number of pictures which you can give by giving the gts and i feel the interval at which you should give them should be around uh, one every 15 days that i feel is the perfect number because you don't need, uh, want to overdo it as well because giving more number of gts means you have to review them more review more number of questions mm -hmm. so yeah so i think uh, the fact that giving gts and reviewing your gts is very important to understand your strengths and your flaws in the preparation but i'd like to know anything else that will help you identify or that helped you identify what your strengths were what were your flaws were where were you lagging behind like did you would you have a friend by your side who would discuss with you and you would probably understand during the discussion or was there anything else that helped you understand what your strengths were and what your flaws were um, I always uh, enjoyed studying alone, so I didn't have any batchmate as such. But I had a senior whom, with whom I used to discuss that am I on the right track. I even used to review, uh, let her review some of my GTs to understand because she had already achieved a great rank in INICT a few years back. So I thought that she'd be the best person to help me and guide me that uh, what should be my further uh, path that I should follow. So are you willing to become that guide and mentor for the next students who are going to appear for the next sessions of INICT? Yes, ma'am. Definitely, I'd love to help them get on the right path and help them achieve what I have achieved today. That's amazing and very kind of you to having taken that responsibility impromptu without even me asking you before this question. Okay, so uh, and last before we, you know, close the session or wrap up the session, how do you think your family has been supportive? How do you think your college and your, uh, you know, professors have been supportive through your journey? Do you want to tell something to your family members or you want to give a shout out to anybody else who's helped you be there where you're today? My family has been my biggest support, be it at the time when I'm stressed or I do, just don't feel like studying. I just go and sit with them and just let them know that I feel I should stop here for some time and just uh, tell them that I can't go ahead anymore. They just tell me, just relax, just sit beside us. You can watch TV, just discuss some non-academic stuff with us so that you feel relieved. Or I even remember going for a, my mom just the day before the INI exam as well as the NEET exam, just to have some fresh think about non-academic stuff and not getting stressed about the result or how will the paper go. Giving INI CT with a relaxed mindset, the because I had a good enough rank in NEET so that I worry about it. So I believe that is that was something different that I did during INI CT that I had not uh, do during NEET. I'd go with a relaxed mindset, not thinking about the result at all, and just give the per like enjoying the paper, like you get to see 200 different patients coming to you, just solve them one and you will have a great feeling at the end of the paper. Okay, that's amazing. Uh, and I'm sure uh, as much as uh, you have worked hard for this rank, along with you, I'm sure your family, your parents have been your backbone and they have helped you definitely at least I can say 50% of your preparation or your exactly. strength was your family. And at least listening yes, to you, I think most families should be supportive like this towards their children. And with the kind of competition that most students are getting in, the support that they receive from their families is usually not much and i'm sure that you're the blessed one to have such a supportive family and a supportive mom and uh, please do wish them congratulations from team prep ladder and me and your mother a very happy mother's day today and uh, just one last thing before we wrap up what is your next plan what do you want to do next am i intend to take up some surgical field like either obgy ortho or surgery up till neat i was just confused in colleges within mumbai but now I'm giving a little consideration to even Ames Delhi. Okay. But before that, I'll just need to go there and see 
that am I actually going to like it there and how is the working protocol there as compared to what I have seen in Mumbai. Okay, that's nice. That's amazing. And I'm sure you're going to make a great surgeon. And uh, we will, of course, be there for all, I mean, for all your needs, whether it's academic, non-academic, whatever, we at Preplander will be more than happy to have you with us for anything that you'd need in future. Wishing you good luck, wishing you uh, an amazing journey forward. I think we will take your leave for now. Thanks a lot, Dr. Akar, for having uh, joined us for this interview. Thank you very much, ma'am. And thank you, Preplander.